Hi, I'm Graham Steinruck, founder of Biodiversity Collective, and we're here at the Elwa River, and we're doing a fungal diversity survey to get kind of an inventory of the types of fungi that live in the area. Especially in the former Lake Aldwell area, which was an area where the dams were removed. So it's a really exciting project where we can look at a restoration area and kind of see what's going on there with the fungal biodiversity. I'm Dr. Amy Honan. I teach mycology for Oregon State University in Corvallis, Oregon, and I work with Graham Steinruck at the Biodiversity Collective. So about 10, 12 years ago, they removed the dams from the Elwha River in an attempt to restore the river to its historic flows, return the fish and the whole ecosystem back to the way it was before the dams were installed. Now that it's a restoration area, they've been planting lots of different trees and plants there to try to restore the habitat. It's a really exciting opportunity to look at the different fungi that grow in the region and see what the kind of fungal associates we'll see with some of these trees, as well as what it looks like when you start to restore a habitat. The Elwha tribe, in conjunction with several other entities, did a lot of restoration work in an effort to speed along the process of recolonization of natural habitats. And seeing these fungi that exist in the riverbed indicates that their restoration efforts are successful, not only from looking at the plants that seem to be thriving, but also the mycobiota, other things that are necessary to support these plants. The event actually is a unique opportunity to see different habitats and ecosystems on the Olympic Peninsula, which is a well-known mushroom habitat. Um, but interestingly, we don't have a full inventory of the mushrooms that grow in the region, so it presents a really unique opportunity to see what types of fungi grow there. Good morning, my honored friends and relatives. Um, I am Vanessa, or Eumpton, and I am a member of the Lower Elwha Klallam tribe. Our village of Titi'ulf was situated here. Um, it was the largest inland permanent village site of the Klallam people. And so the dams were, there was one of them just um, downriver of us, and then the Glines Canyon Dam was up above us in the park. Those were removed in 2011 to 2015, which we dewatered these reservoirs. We're, where we're standing now, or would have previously been underwater. Last year was the first time we've been able to fish in 12 years. So we're really excited to start healing our people as well. I think it would be interesting to document some of the macro fungi or larger fungi that we can see. Um, as we were saying, the soil sampling will probably have different fungi that we'll see in the DNA there than the ones above ground, but we're hoping to see a little bit of things that are the, the same. We're kind of doing a, a kind of a course survey. Just take some soil samples, see what fungi are, are in there. In this area, right, they planted, uh, what did Vanessa say, 430,000 plants or something, right? If they didn't have the associated fungi, those plants wouldn't survive. So if we're thinking about res restoration, we need to think about the fungi because our efforts to restore an area if the fungi aren't there are gonna fail. And so that's loss of money, that's time, just a big failure. So for this particular, where they planted the lupins and these willows, if the plants don't come and colonize this, the river's just gonna blow through here in a few years and that, and that work's gonna be all for naught as well. Roll them up, twist them closed. Excellent. Yep. And then so we'll throw these on ice when we get back to the car, and then we'll freeze them, and then tomorrow we'll do the extractions Send it in the, to the lab. lab. Yeah. yeah. A team of students, researchers, and mycologists headed out to collect any type of fungi they could find on the edge of the Elwha River. About 30 volunteers, which included casual hobbyists, students, 
Amateur and academic mycologists all combed the shores of the former Lake Aldwell for any types of fungal life. Anything from rust, molds, or crusts on logs or rocks to large macro fungi growing in the restoration area. Everything was carefully photographed, vouchered, and collected for DNA analyzation, then to be dried and held at the Burke Herbarium at the University of Washington. Excuse me, miss, can you remind me your name? I'm, yeah, let me just, um, yeah, yeah. yeah. And put lupin. I'm Howard Sprouse and my company is the Remediators Incorporated and I'm a long-term resident of the Olympic Peninsula and I love mushrooms. This is so cool because we, we got to work in the only other fungal diversity formal study that had ever been conducted in the Olympic Mountains on determining just what was happening both underground and in, in on top of the ground during the fruiting season of these mushrooms. That, that study was five years long and in the scale of time that fungi marched to five years we didn't even begin to uncover what we're going to uncover moving forward in continuing research. This is the beginning and there's, there's enough of that data still available that we can compare with what we're finding now and that we can integrate the process that we found out over the last few days. On day two, the volunteers headed out into a nearby conifer-dominated forest to discover what the fungi population could look like had the dams never been built in the first place. The team of researchers flipped over logs, looked under stumps and in bog areas to discover a tremendous diversity of species. Large mushrooms fruit only at certain times of the year during the perfect conditions, so it's essential to also test the microscopic and unseen fungi that's growing below ground. Only half of it. This is a hygroscopy, I'm not really sure which over the course of the two days spent in the field, the team made over 500 herbarium collections with over 200 different species. My name is Chris Mideri. Uh, I'm here to talk a bit about the vouchering process. So today we went out um, just outside the Elwha uh, River, formerly that was dammed. So I'm very confident saying that this is an Amanita, although the species um, I'm not quite sure. Then the big thing that we need to include on the voucher, and I'm just gonna make sure that I have the number pulled up, um, is the iNaturalist ID number. We're gonna dry this uh, specimen here, um, and uh, we're gonna send it in for, for DNA sequencing. Um, and so it's really important that we write down this iNaturalist number and, and uh, because this is how the, the DNA labs kind of track which, which mushroom is, is which. You have the exact location, you have the exact time, all the way down to the, the, the DNA sequence of the, of the mushroom. Um, and so uh, this, is, this is how communi uh, community mycology works. that we found in the woods. We put them on the dryer, usually overnight. Once they get dry, we pull off a little bit of uh, tissue, put it in a bag, um, and send it for DNA sequencing. And the rest of the specimen goes into a different bag, which then goes to the Burke Museum. We'll have them either in the plastic bags they arrived in, or we'll have them in sealed herbarium bags, which then goes into a box, in a bigger box. Um, and that kind of helps prevent 
bugs from getting into the specimens. Our primary collection is three rooms in the basement of Hitchcock Hall, which is the bio department building at the University of Washington. But we also have collections in the basement of the Burke Museum proper and within a tertiary building on campus. All of the observations from this project can be seen by anyone, an iNaturalist, in the project OPFF 2024 Vouchered Collections. Alright, so we took soil samples from three different habitats. We took soil from riverbed, from riparian area, and from conifer forests. And so for each soil sample, we take 250 milligrams of the soil and we put it in this test tube. At the bottom of this test tube, there are glass beads. So the soil goes in here, we put a little bit of liquid buffer in there, and then we agitate the sample, or called vortexing, and that these little silica glass beads break up all the material, all the soil. What we do is then we put the whole sample into a centrifuge and we're gonna spin that down so the DNA is in that liquid, and so the last product would be just a tube with just DNA. It's where we'll understand all the fungal sequences that are in that DNA extraction. Racing through, we're already step three. Yep, it's just for a mixing step. The overall results of the fungal biodiversity survey may not be obvious for years to come, but this is the beginning of a movement to document and track the progress of a habitat restoration area like the Elwha River, and to help make way for future projects similar to this one. The flora, the fauna, and the funga all working together in a very biodiverse world. Anyone can participate in this project. Simply go to biodiversitycollective.org or the Olympic Fungi Festival for more information on how to join or contribute to citizen science.